and welcome back to the Give and Go. I'm your host Reynoso here with my boy Soltero. What's up, guys? We had two matches today. We are back with Euros coverage. Please subscribe, join the Give and Go community because we'll be covering both the Euros and the Copa America. Give us a thumbs up on this stream right now. We had two games that ended with identical score lines, yeah. with Switzerland defeating Italy 2 0 and Germany defeating Denmark 2 0. Chat right off the bat, let me know what are your takeaways from this Germany result against Denmark in Dortmund Stadium. How do you guys feel about the result today? Because for as good as the scoreline looks, I think Denmark got a little unlucky there when the game was tight, bro. Yeah, I mean, it's a game of inches, mm -hmm. football, and on one play, Denmark's a toe offside. Yeah. And then in the next play, they're conceding a really unlucky penalty, mm -hmm. right? Through a handball. Kai Havertz steps up and let's just say, what a perfect finish from the penalty spot. Germany go up 1-0 and that was the moment that I think Denmark finally just couldn't hold on anymore because the floodgates started to open. Uh, there was another really good goal uh, that Germany was able to get and then from there, they could have had 3-4-5 if Havertz was just more on it. Yeah, I agree. And also... Just the build up to that moment, I think, was what really made me invested in this match because I actually felt a little bit of a, I felt a little Danish for a little while watching this game. And it just kind of happened naturally. I started watching the game neutrally, honestly, just looking at the match, see how both teams played. And I loved how Denmark neutralized, or at the least, got past those first 20 minutes against Germany, which many other teams have not been able to survive. Yeah. Those first 20 minutes, Germany came all out on them, and they were able to survive that period, not conceding a goal. They get, they get, they did concede one, but it was ultimately called, um, it was ultimately called off because a, of it was a, a foul, foul in, the, yeah, yeah. in the corner kick. But yeah. after that, they settled into the match, and honestly, I would say they finished off the first half better than Germany with... Uh, um, Rasmus Hoyland having a few shots on goal or at least the opportunity to bro and yeah. he could have done a lot more in my opinion with those opportunities Neuer getting some big saves and then the way they started the second half was pretty much the same story starting to impose themselves a little bit so I wasn't surprised when for a brief moment I thought Denmark had gone up because they were working their way towards that yeah. but then in the span of like three minutes bro the unluckiest three minutes you could say for Denmark in a Unlucky. long long time dude it goes from a ruled offside goal where he was offside it's just really really harsh but he was offside the toe was offside and the same thing can be said for the handball it is a handball given the rules of modern football right now I just think it's so harsh because that ball looked like it was going nowhere and it caught I think it was Anderson I think it caught him just completely by some surprise it is a handball it's just so tough to concede that and ultimately for me I think the tagline is unlucky for Denmark Unlucky for Denmark for sure, but I do think Germany were the better team overall. The first 20 minutes, Germany looked ridiculously good and Denmark couldn't even get a hold of the ball. They were just constantly defending. And, but I, I do agree. Denmark then went on to have a really good, let's say, 50, 45 minutes from that moment. And they really did neutralize the game and crafted some chances of their own. But then Germany also finished the game a lot stronger. So I think Germany overall had the better game. And I do think they deserve to go through. But yeah, Denmark, uh, they kept it closer than I thought they would, especially in that first half. I would disagree with that because I, I think up until that 60th minute before that... Uh the ruled offside call and the penalty. The penalty was the biggest part. I think the Denmark team we saw afterwards was just completely different. They're not going to get two goals in this match or even one, honestly. But I, I think, honestly, by like the 12th minute, it felt like they were like, all right, bet, we're going to play for penalties here. And I think that was their game plan the entire time. So the fact that they were on the ball a lot to start off that second half mm -hmm. was actually a good indication of what they were trying to do in terms of executing their game plan. I think this game was going to be tight from Denmark's perspective had the calls gone in their favor. And so I think it, they, they, I feel like I got robbed of that opportunity ultimately because of the decisions that were made, which were correct. But I just wish personally that I could have seen Germany carve them up first to get that first goal instead of rely on like a penalty call like the one we saw. That's all I want to see because Absolutely. I actually do think that at the end of the day, Germany gets the result. I do think so, but I was interested in what Denmark was trying to propose to me as a neutral viewer because I was like, huh, you guys are keeping yourselves in this match and maybe this goes to extra time and you get Germany a little nervous. That's all I was interested to see. No, I mean, yeah, that definitely was in the cards for Denmark, but 
Yeah, I guess it just didn't go no, their way. No, it didn't. That's, That's just all saying. it is. It's so it just unlucky, didn't go man. their way. It's so unlucky in that maybe the the harsh weather conditions came into play, man. I don't know. We had a a suspension of the game in this match. We had some crazy stills of lightning bolts striking on the stadium. This game was crazy. Game of inches, ultimately. And Germany wins 2-0, proceeding through to the quarterfinals now uh, and knocking Denmark out. The chat says Germany just needs to be more accurate. I think that's a fair statement because I think their finishing has been... Honestly, I need to see it be sharper. I need to see it be sharper from just not just guys like Havers. I think everybody, yeah. everybody involved needs to be sharper. Yeah, honestly. Their second goal was a really good finish from Musiala. He seems to be on target usually when he gets those chances, but... Everyone else, especially Sané and Havertz specifically, man, I don't think I can trust them in front of goal. I, I really can't. Like, if they have a good opportunity, I'm betting that they won't actually finish. And that's not the best thing to say if you're Germany, considering you're trying to get to a final. And what better highlight of Kai Havertz's whole career than that moment where he took the ball on in stride off <sighs> of a beautiful, mesmerizing touch, Crazy. bypassing the defense on a one-on-one -on -one with the goalkeeper, and then he just puts it wide. Yeah. That's that's his career right there. It Incredible is. on the ball. His technical ability has never been doubted, but his finishing, man, it's just that's the part that gets me. Ultimately, though, he did have a good penalty kick, and I will give him credit for that. The penalty He's kick great at was penalties. perfect, <laughs> considering that uh, Schmeichel was having himself a good game, too. Yeah. Predicted it correctly, but it was placed so good that he got the goal. So I agree with the, you guys are saying in the chat. I think Germany needs to up their finishing to feel better about themselves moving forward, especially if they're destined to face off a team like Spain, for example. For Denmark, this is the end of the road of what was ultimately a very frustrating offense to watch specifically, man. This is oh, one of my least yeah. off favorite offenses to watch this entire tournament. Rasmus Hoyland, man, I think he has a lot of work to do. I know he's very young, but for me, I was constantly criticizing this tournament, asking for him to step up. He gets in really good positions, and I will give him that credit, but what he does when he has the ball, not even his finishing, his decision-making on the ball, I've always found to be very curious. I know he's young. Maybe in the future he can better that aspect of his game. But right now, maybe the responsibility is just too big for him at this moment because he had a lot of opportunities on the ball today. I just didn't see enough productivity out of Hoyland specifically and the pieces around him too that don't service him as much, honestly. Yeah, and honestly, I think that's been Hoyland's last whole year at Manchester <laughs> United. It's just been really bad decision-making, not really hitting the scene the way that a lot of people thought he would coming from Atalanta. And this is just a continuation of that because, yeah, he, I... At the moment, he truly is just an average striker. Yeah. So, yeah, he'll give you good movements. He'll get on the ball. He'll get in dangerous positions. But he's not going to really do anything with it. And I think that's the frustrating part if you had high hopes for Hoyland. But he's still young. He still has room for improvement. Curious to see where, how his career yeah. ends up. So, Altero, do you still feel the same about Denmark from the preview of the Euros? I'm actually interested in knowing that. What do you think uh, Denmark lands now, given that your preview for them was pretty pessimistic after a couple years of disappointment from this Danish team. Did they up their stock here? Did they end up doing the same thing? How do you assess this Denmark performance in the Euros? I mean, out of the 16 teams in this knockout stage, I think Denmark probably were one of the weaker ones. I'd say either the weakest or the second weakest. So I guess my assessment really hasn't changed. I had them getting yeah, to the round of yeah. 16. I had them exiting at the round of 16. It's exactly what happened. So I, I don't think I've really gained any positivity from Denmark, but they didn't get worse, mm -mm. if that makes any mm -mm. sense. So yeah, Denmark is exactly how I've seen them. Yeah, and I, I guess the frustrating part is that you would hope that they could have ascended to a new level the way that we've seen Switzerland do in this tournament. Mm -hmm. So let me shift on over because the same kind of... Uh, the same kind of frustration you had towards Denmark, I had towards Switzerland in the Euros previews because you look at their lineup, you look at the quality they have. I've always expected them to be so much better, uh, especially in recent memory. And I've been waiting for them to have that moment where they arrive on a big stage beyond what they did at the Euros when they defeated France in that upset. That was a great result. But afterwards, we didn't see them do much in the tournament. I want to see Switzerland show up with the talent that they have. I think this might be the run, bro. This Dude. might be the run. This team can go to the final. Yeah. They're playing probably top two football right now at the Euros. Yeah. Switzerland looked incredible today, and they spanked the Italians. Spanked. They spanked them, bro. Spanked, uh, punished, destroyed. They got rocked. The Italians rocked, got rocked. Got rocked. Sat on uh, their asses, bro. Uh, but yeah, ass, yeah, ass checked, uh, uh, gut punched. They got <laughs> wrecked. They got uh, everything, bro. Everything. Italy got cooked like the damn spaghetti they eat, bro. They got cooked today with Vargas having an insane match. Banger. Freuler having a beauty of a masterclass in the midfield. And this Swiss team showing out 
to improving people such as myself wrong that they are now arriving to a major tournament and they are here to compete against these top, top teams because I'm already seeing comments right now. Uh, you realize that Mexico is ranked higher than Switzerland according to FIFA. That's, That's so what's funny. crazy, man. The perception of uh, Switzerland has been very low recently, I think, and I'm really happy that they're now able to be this prominent on the stage this big playing the way that they are because the way they're winning these games, bro, it's actually incredibly impressive. It's so impressive. They outclassed Italy today. Honestly, this wasn't even a contest. This was a very easy game for Switzerland. They were just constantly attacking Italy, and Italy could not build through the Swiss. They just couldn't do it. Mm -mm. They tried to make two, three passes. It was always cut out. Italy's only chances that they were able to get was because Switzerland lost the ball. Yeah. They gave it to the Italians, and that was the only chance Italy had any sort of joy was in transition. But other than that, they were constantly tracking back, chasing Switzerland jerseys. So this was one of the most complete performances we've seen at the Euros. Switzerland looked so comfortable throughout the entire 90 minutes. This was truly impressive, and Italy looked very poor on. Honestly. I think there was a moment in like the 60th minute where you, I feel like you could just tell that the Italians just gave up. They're like, we're not, we're not going to yeah, do this not, No, yeah. We, well, we don't have the tools. They know, yeah. And what, it was 46 seconds into the second half when Vlada yeah. scored the screamer. Yeah. And at that point I was like, oh, well, Italy's not scoring two goals. Yeah. They could get one. Yeah. Like one nil was still a chance for them to tie, but there was no way Italy were going to get two goals in this match. So the game was done and dusted as soon as the second half started. This is an interesting comment because it does, it does bring up a good question. The hitman says, don't be fooled by Switzerland. Italy was insanely poor. They were. Switzerland will get found out next round. And... A few more comments saying that ultimately Italy is a sub Euros team. They're one of the poor sides in this tournament. I think after this performance, I think it does show the limitations. How much credit can you give to a Swiss side than, than for dominating Italy, a team who ultimately was destined to get eliminated in this tournament? Yeah, but that, that's the thing. I, I like that. Italy was destined to lose against Switzerland because through the group stage performances, it was very clear Italy don't have an offense. Mm -hmm. It was very clear. Barely have a midfield, bro. Yeah, yeah, and barely Lucky, have man. a midfield. So their only shot, their bright spot was the defense, and their starting center back was also out <laughs> due, due to yellow yeah, cards. Man. So it was not looking good. Donnarumma has been great this tournament, yeah. and he also had a very good game, but going forward, Italy had nothing to offer so this game is ex is what we expected it to be honestly so sh I, I don't think you should downplay Switzerland though because of that because they could have made this game tight but no, they killed Italy yeah. whereas like they, they could have just you know sat back a little bit more but no they, they decided not to and they really took it to I, I can't downplay the because it's an A plus performance it, a plus. it was perfect it was this perfect. perfect from all the, from the by the 60th minute this game was done bro I can't yeah. get over that like Italy looked done and dusted in a knockout match after you know being defending champions so for Switzerland I actually was thinking about it man they are giving me the same type of energy the same type of vibe as Colombia right now, funny mm -hmm. enough. And I know that they're two very distinct, different countries. Sure, Switzerland not, might not be dancing after they score their goals, but I think one of the biggest factors that, make, that makes the Swiss team so dangerous is the anybody can score factor. Yes. But the fact that Freuler got a goal today and then Vargas scoring a banger as well, and Bolo can get his goal, Shaka can get his goal, and then also the rotations that Yakin has been doing. Shakiri got a beautiful goal during this tournament. Mm -hmm. I think that Yakin was highly criticized by myself and also the Swiss uh, fan base from what I saw online you have to be happy with the way he's managed the team so far because he's yeah. rotating the, that offense perfectly playing the players that are in form and then you know stepping up seeing players step up in a way that's been really cool in a similar way to Colombia where literally anybody from the mm -hmm. up front offense or the midfield or maybe even a defender with like a kanji getting up in the air can score a goal for this team and is actually doing it so far in the tournament it's kind of cool yeah yeah I really like Switzerland because of that and I don't joke when I say Switzerland can get to the final if they keep playing like this so I agree they look incredible on all fronts the hitman says this Switzerland result reminds me of the Portugal 6-1 win ironically against Switzerland in the 2022 World Cup tell me why tell me why tell me why that reminds you of that because I think that's a funny result to bring up tell me why that's a result that this result reminds you of let me look at some more super maybe just here. because it was so easy is that what it is I, probably yeah. because it was, blowout? it was a blowout for Portugal in that game and this one felt like a blowout dude yeah it felt like it like Italy did not show up and they got killed by Switzerland Christopher Molina says, who else woke up on the playa confused and hungover, bro? We all did, man. We all did, man. Uh, great night, though. We had a great night. Christopher Molina once again says, on another note, Hugo Weckman, the GOAT for real. We're talking uh, pre-shoot. We're not going to look him up. We're never going to look never that man up. Never going to look him up, man. Never, man. I'm just going to wait for him to start from Mexico one day and be like, there he is, man. The hitman says, Musiala could have played for Nigeria. Is that true? I don't. I thought it was England. 
I thought for the longest time Musiala almost played for England and at one point yeah, like he was all three. I mean, he'd that'd be crazy. All yeah. Three, yeah, yeah, that'd be no, crazy. No, but you don't want to play for Nigeria. It's a curse to play oh, for dude, that the team. The way they're playing right now, it's a curse. The way they're playing right now, my goodness. And uh, just I guess final comments on Italy. Disappointing with his result, having a a uh, wacky offense. They say Skamaka is the type of guy to go to a restaurant and uh, not get any food. Because uh, he gets no service. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, no it's service, man. not the necessarily his fault. He just gets it. no service, yeah, bro. Even Kiesa, for as much energy as he shows, just cannot produce the way that I would hope him to right. with the Italian team. I think they just, I mean, what, what? what's the takeaway here? What can Italy do going forward? Because I was looking at like what an Italian fan was saying on Twitter after his result. He said, excluding that anomaly of the Euro's 2016 victory, we've had the same international record as Honduras since 2006 World Cup. Yeah, that is crazy. Like they, yeah. Yeah, a really poor 2010 appearance. Uh -huh. A really bad 2014 appearance mm -hmm. where they got knocked out of the group stage by Costa Rica. Um, then missed and out then on they two. they missed out yeah. on two World Cups. Yeah, they've been terrible. Uh, they've been <laughs> they've awful, been really man. bad. They've been awful, man. <laughs> and so I don't know where they go from here. Like, yeah. is this a thing where Italy was once a giant power in football and now they're just going to enter a very dark period of trying to work their way back up to that and never achieving it? Or will they one day reach that height once again? Because as I see in the chat, folks love it when Italy is good. We all love it when Italy is good Italy for the fine, for the sake man. of the sport, man. It's mm -hmm. a beautiful thing to see. But on the international level, outside of this anomaly of a 2016 Euros, uh, 2020 Euros victory that we saw, uh, we haven't seen a good Italian team for a very long time. Bro. Yeah, I mean, it's not looking good. I'll be honest. There's just no creative dynamic forwards that are italian i mean yes they play at a very high level but if you want to have a cutting edge you have to be the best at the international stage and italians just simply don't have that right they have good midfielders they have good defenders but there's just nothing in the forward department so yeah this might be a dark period for italy they'll, i think they'll always qualify though if they keep their midfield and defense like like it is now but yeah they'll never be necessarily fun to watch yeah and on the flip side, I have a comment here from, a, I think it's a Swiss fan. VLK says, here in Switzerland, we're surprised by our team's results because the expectations were low going into the Euros. Everything from group stage is bonus. That's exactly what I would think you guys would be uh, thinking regarding this team. It was our, how they it, thought about it, it. It was our take too. And I mean, in our previews, I remember saying that like, yes, Switzerland have a really good team on paper, but the results haven't been the best since the Euros. But I mean, this team is looking even better than when they made that really good run three years ago. So, you know, if that team was able to do what they achieved then, this team can go to a semifinal for sure. And I mean, Switzerland looking good to make, to go very deep in this tournament. Yeah, man. So the next team that they face off against in the quarterfinals is either the winner of England versus Slovakia. So if England wins that match, they get a feisty English side. That game is going to be ridiculous. That's gonna be it's fun, England. Man. And I mean, Slovakia would have to pull a masterclass here, but at the end of getting past England, then Switzerland, I think, will take care of Slovakia, in my opinion. So we should get a great matchup in the quarterfinals for Switzerland to get tested in the biggest way possible in this tournament. Very exciting stuff. Let's do daily awards. Let's do daily awards. We're going to keep the announcement short because there's just two games ultimately today. Daily awards. We have goal of the day. Who wins the goal of the day? Is it Vargas's goal? Yeah, give me Vargas's yeah. goal for sure. It was a beauty. 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 Uh, I've seen so many players attempt that shot in this tournament so far. I'm happy to finally see one fall, man. Yeah. That like from the corner, swinging it into the top right corner, Sneaks floating it. Right under the bar. Yeah, Gets sneaking right, it right in under. There, yeah. We've been waiting to see something like that. And I feel like we finally got it. So thank you to Vargas for delivering. I'm going to vote for him. Chat seems to agree, although I'm seeing some shouts from Musiala's goal. It was a good goal. Which was a good goal, it was too. A good finish. It was a good goal, too. I'm going to go Vargas. Vargas. Performance of the day. Who gets the performance of the day? Because we had some good performance today, man. We had some good performance. I actually think I'm going to give it to Vargas, too, because he was the assister to Freuler's goal as well. He was constantly penetrating on that left flank. So, honestly, I'm going to go Ruben Vargas. Damn, getting two awards in one day, filling up the trophy cabinet. I'm cool with that. The only guy I was going to shout for was Freuler getting a goal today. Mm -hmm. And he dominated that midfield, bro. He dominated it. Yeah. And I love seeing it. So, I'm down for either one. But it looks like Vargas is a winner once again. Game of the day. We had two 2-0 two no results. Which game did y'all enjoy more? This one should be interesting because the scoreline's the same, but very different uh, things happening. Because one I game know. was done by the 60th minute, yeah. and the other one was getting suspended by the 35th. <laughs> so, you know, <laughs> both had interesting things happen, they man. They did, they did. 
I think it was more fun for me to watch Switzerland just pop off. And, and and Italy didn't show up. The Dan- the Denmark game was tighter for longer, but I just have more fun watching Switzerland play. I'm not gonna lie. So personally, I'm just gonna go Switzerland game. All right, yeah. I'm gonna go. I'll, I'll go Germany on this one. I'll go Germany on this one. I just like seeing Germany play. I like the atmosphere. I like the uh, threat that Denmark posed for a good 60 minutes. I like that a little bit more than what I saw from the dominant display that Switzerland put through mm-hmm. uh, against Italy. So I'm going to go with that one. Let's do previews for tomorrow's matches. We have two knockout games tomorrow. Very exciting with England facing off against Slovakia. Folks, we're going to do a poll here. England versus Slovakia. Who goes through? No draws because it's a knockout uh, knockout round. I'm letting Bruce run know right now. <laughs> England versus Slovakia. Who wins this game? Let me know in the chat down below because... I have England winning. I do have England winning this. I think Slovakia will make it as tight as they can. I don't think it'll be easy for England considering their chance creation has been shit so far at this tournament. But regardless, I, I think their quality is going to be a little too much for Slovakia. Oh, we got some Slovakia fans in the chat. We got we got four shouts for Slovakia in the chat. I mean, the story. And if there was ever a time to take care of this English side and knock them out early, it is now, especially with Slovakia, and the way that we saw them upset Belgium in the group stage, if there was a time to do it, it is now. It is now. I just also say the same thing for England. If there's a time to wake up and respond to all the drama, it's also now. And even mm-hmm. if they don't respond, that's my thing, they can still pull out a victory. They can still pull out a result against a team of this quality, in my opinion. So yeah. I'm not saying England has to play up to like a 10 out of 10 or A plus type performance, they can put in a B minus performance and still win this game in my opinion. Yeah, actually, yeah. If you think about it, Slovakia is probably on par with Denmark and Serbia. And in those games, yes, England did not do well, but they didn't lose. Mm -hmm. So I see the same thing happening here. England will pull out a result. I do see it tight though. I mean, Mm -hmm. Slovakia will make this hard. Yeah. It looks like the chat agrees with England at 58%, Slovakia at 42%. That's pretty close, though. That's pretty close, and I'm excited. I'm excited. (laughs) I want to see if it actually ends up being that close, a a match in which it, you know, 60% towards England, 40% towards Slovakia. I'm interested to see that. I'm going to go with England, but hey, if Slovakia wins... This chat's going to go crazy. The stream's going to go crazy tomorrow, so join us for that tomorrow. And then next up, we have Spain versus Georgia. Georgia, one of the best stories in all of international football with what they've done making their debut at the Euros and having an incredible set of performances so far, coming off of an incredible victory against Portugal to qualify into the round of 16, whereas Spain has been doing the same thing in the sense of impressing, balling out, uh, dynamic play, yeah. Lamine Yamal, yeah. Nico Williams, Morata, Rodri, Fabian Ruiz, Pedri. Mm-hmm. Spain is looking like, to me, the favorite for the tournament as of right now, the hottest team right now, number one, and they start off their knockout stage campaign against this Georgian side. Yeah, uh, I mean, I just can't wait to see Spain play, just like we saw Switzerland and Germany go off today. Kind of expect the same thing. Now, I think what'll be fun here is to see Georgia's approach. Mm-hmm. Every game that they've played in has had drama, and they've had their chances because they do have dynamic players themselves. I, I can see Georgia, maybe not scoring, but getting very, very close at the very least, and maybe making the Spanish defense sweat a little bit. So I, I'm just excited to see that happen, but... I mean, I think Spain's going to get the dub here. I got Spain getting the dub. I, it's knockout time, and this Spanish team is trying to rewrite their uh, mm-hmm. their new generation here. I I hate it, man. I hate picking Spain low-key because this Georgian team deserves, honestly, a, a much... I like, know, they, they got man. matched up with such a tough team, bro. I know, bro. They got matched up with such a tough team. I'm, I'm telling you. And so, yeah, it's unfortunate, but Georgia, I still... I still expect to put on an absolute show. And that's the yeah. cool thing about them is even if they get blown out, even if they lose badly, they'll go out swinging. They are so entertaining to watch. They have such ballers on their team. I'm excited to see them. I'm excited to see them. And so I got Spain winning. Looks like the chat agrees with Spain at 86%. Georgia at 13 And that ultimately closes out tomorrow's match previews. Guys, the Euros are shaping up to be very, very entertaining. Let's finish off with some Super Chats here before we go. We're going to head out soon because we got Copa America games coming up. We have Rory Simmons saying England needs to get to semifinals at least now. I think that's I think he might be saying that because of the path that is there for uh, England right now. So it's um, going to be so tough. Yeah. That's um, going to be, uh, that could be 50 50 if England get there. Mm hmm. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so I, I I don't know, man. I take it one stage at a time. One stage bro. at a time. Let's, FIFA Rig says Slovakia has to push for penalties, England's weakness. I think you're right. I think you're right. Just making the game very, very tight, making it very. Um, 
tough and compact for England to break down because we've seen England have chemistry issues so far in this tournament. Yeah. If you force them to try to get creative, to try to do something clever on the ball, which they are capable of, I wonder what we see from England. I wonder if we see a response, if ultimately they do break you, or if, you know, maybe they get nervous and it's the 70th minute and there's 20 minutes until extra time and England's starting to struggle a little bit on the ball and then you get to extra time and once you get there, anything can happen. I mean, it could it could definitely happen. We think, we've seen crazier things happen in football. We really have. So I'm not ruling out the Slovakia upset. I'm just, if I got to make a pick, I'm going to go with England. Mm -hmm. Guys, thank you so much for watching the stream. We're going to be back in a few hours for the Copa America reaction because we got a big match between Canada and Chile to decide who gets out of the group. But as always, subscribe, comment, let us know your thoughts on Euros. We always read them. And we'll be back here tomorrow for another Euros knockout round of 16 reaction. Till next time, guys. Peace.